What if I told you that X670 eBoards were getting much cheaper? Would you believe me? Well, we're going to find out in today's video. Today we're going to take a bit of a look at this new board from MSI. It's the MAG X670E Tomahawk Wi-Fi. It's kind of MSI's attempt to make cheaper top-end boards for AM5 and Ryzen 7000 CPUs. But as usual with our motherboard content, ladies and gents, these videos are not reviews. They're just overviews so we can see what's on the board and what physically comes in the box with a brand new motherboard. Let's do a motherboard thing. Alrighty, here it is ladies and gents, the MSI MAG X670E Tomahawk Wi-Fi. Let's do the usual thing, let's get the motherboard out of the way so we can take a little bit of a closer look at everything that comes with this brand new board from MSI. Alright, first up we've got some M.2 clips. Now, these are basically to hold your M.2 drives in without any screws and this has become commonplace with many new motherboards from many manufacturers over the last two or so years. I like to see it. There's also a set of SATA or SATA cables for your 2.5 inch SSDs or those old spinning rust drives. There's also some antennas for the built-in Bluetooth and Wi-Fi 6E. That's right, it's got 6 gigahertz Wi-Fi. There's also some stickers and whatnot to label your cables and, you know, just for a bit of bling in your system if that's what you want. There's also the European Union Regulatory Services Notices, blah, 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 blah. you don't need it. There's also the Quick Installation Guide. Did anyone else see the ghost move that bit of plastic on the side of the frame? Anyway, this will help you install all of your things. All right, let's unsheath the X670E Tomahawk Wi-Fi and take a bit of a closer look at what makes this board tick. All right, let's take a look. First off, we've got the front panel audio header. There's a four pin, 12 volt RGB header. It's not addressable RGB here, ladies and gents. Well, not for that header anyway. There's two PWM fan headers for things like your liquid cooler pumps or your fans, right? That makes sense. There's also two USB 2.0 headers for things like liquid coolers, RGB controllers, and anything that requires internal USB. There's also an internal USB 3.2 header for your front panel connections and also the front panel connections for your lots on your switches let you know your system is up and running. There's another right angled USB 3.2 front panel header, four SATA or SATA ports for your 2.5 inch SSD, all those spinning rust drives. There's a front panel USB type C header. There's a 24 pin power connector to send juice to your brand new X670E Tomahawk Wi-Fi. There's two more PWM fan headers. There's a postcode LED array for helping you diagnose your system if anything has gone awry. There's also a three pin five volt addressable RGB header up there as well. On the top right hand edge of the board you'll notice there's another four pin 12 volt RGB header and three more PWM fan headers for typically used for liquid coolers and pumps and CPU fan and all that stuff up there. Pretty standard stuff here for a motherboard. There's another PWM fan header which is actually in line with the top M.2 slot that I thought was worth mentioning as well. There's two 8-pin EPS power connectors to send juice to your Ryzen 7000 CPU. For expansion, we've got a single PCIe Gen 5x16 slot, then there is a PCIe 3.0x1 slot. There's also a PCIe Gen 4x4 slot in a x16 form factor, as well as another PCIe Gen 4x2 slot in the x16 form factor. In terms of power delivery, this board features a 14 plus 2 plus 1 phase duet power rail system from MSI with 80 amp power stages. The whole I.O. cover is a heatsink for that side of the VRM layer and there's also a big heatsink along the top edge of the board as well to assist with cooling. One thing that we've talked about in length with these AM5 boards is their cooler compatibility with AM4 coolers. And we've got a full guide on what will and will not fit with AM5 with, with cross-gen compatibility. And I'll link that in the description down below. As you can see, it uses standard AM5 cooler mounting with that pre-installed mounting hardware. If we open up the AM5 socket, which is actually LGA1718, you can see the contact pins for the back of your CPU. This is just in case you've never ever seen this before and be careful because if you bend something here 
your CPU is not going to work. If we flip the board over and take a little bit of a look at the back of this board from MSI, you can see that there's not a whole lot going on here. I will mention that there are labels for keep out zones so you don't accidentally put screws in and short out your motherboard, as well as the pre-installed socket backplate which is now non-removable with AM5. As far as RAM compatibility, it supports four DDR5 RAM modules up to 128 gigs in total at 6600 mega transfers. All right, let's take the heat sinks off the M.2 slots on this board. This board has a total of four M.2 slots. As for their configuration, there is one PCIe Gen 5 M.2 slot and three PCIe Gen 4 M.2 slots in total. There's three which are in line with each other, and if we look on the other side, there's one that is facing the opposite direction. Now, along with these M.2 slots, it does have a single clip that's pre-installed on the socket that allows you to install your M.2 drives without using any screws whatsoever. The other ones you'll have to install yourself. And on the board, there's actually labels for what every slot does, just in case you didn't want to look at the manual while you were building. In terms of rear I.O., we've got a DisplayPort connector, HDMI, there's a BIOS flashback button, there's some USB Type-A, USB Type-C, there's also 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, the antenna connectors for the built-in Wi-Fi 6E, and audio jacks for things like your surround sound setup, your headphones, there's also optical and SPDIF output, for 7.1 digital surround sound and an integrated IO shield. But as a wise man once said, it's time for Cinematic Team. There we go, there we go, we got it. Hope you enjoyed this first look and overview of this new board from MSI. In terms of the feature set with this board, I think that it's got just about everything you're going to need if you're building a brand new Ryzen 7000 system. But I guess we should address the elephant in the room because this is kind of where MSI is trying to position boards like this realistically, right? So the US price, I actually happened to find it because we don't have much pricing information on this yet. It is released, you can buy it in some places. It does look like it's a bit hard to find, but the elephant in the room, ladies and gents, you ready? Let's cue an elephant somewhere on the screen. I don't know how to do that, but you know, ed editors can do that and I'm the editor, so I'll do it. <laughs> it's not clear. If you're interested in the MSI MAG X670E Tomahawk Wi-Fi, they're going for around $339 at the time of filming this video. But as I mentioned, the product page is up. There are some places around the place that kind of have it listed. There's some news articles about the board, but other than that, this board almost doesn't exist. Now, why am I saying that? Because this board kind of just arrived from MSI and then I never got pricing. So I'll put it in the description or a pinned comment. And if I haven't done that, let me know what you think it's worth in your region. And if you've seen this available in your region in like non-English speaking regions and you speak English, let me know because I'm curious to see where you could actually get this board. Because in Australia, it doesn't exist. And like I said, a couple news articles, which is where I found the US price. 339 though, 339 for an X670E board, that is looking kind of where I thought the pricing was originally going to be because we can get some X670 boards and some B650E boards for around 400 US dollars, which I thought was 
a bit, you know, how you going? But 339, that's looking a bit more attractive. But let's, let's do this together, guys. Let's drive all these companies to make it even cheaper because I have a theory, right? And I, I talked to my friend about this earlier and over the weekend. When the ongoing pandemic was happening, right? Board manufacturers and people who created this hardware, they were like, you know what? We can charge whatever we want and people are gonna buy it. Now that we're on the tail end of all of that, here's my theory. They're like, you know what? We're gonna charge whatever we want for it. And now no one is buying anything because it's too expensive. And that's why we're in a bit of a PC part downturn because it's all too expensive. The whole industry needs to recalibrate and price this stuff for what it's actually worth. Not just some made up money number that someone in a suit comes along and makes up. That's not how this works. Well, actually, that's exactly how it works. But I hate that, and I'm sure you guys hate it too. But if you didn't hate this video, do me the old favor and actually hit subscribe because I don't like begging for subscribers, but there's one thing I need to tell you guys about. If you subscribe, it's not really doing anything other than letting us know that you're here watching our content. We need to know that because it gives us an indication of stuff that you people like. Not only that, it lets us know that you love us, okay? That's basically it. You're actually doing a lot for us. I know there's lots of people that probably watch our videos that haven't clicked subscribe. It takes you one second, people. Please hit it and I'll love you forever. You will win absolutely nothing, but it'll be worth it because we can be friends. I know I'm not trying to beg for subscribers, but you know, I know there's lots of people that watch that don't subscribe to YouTube channels, but you just click the button. It helps everybody, it helps you too. Notifications sometimes work, so maybe click that too. Anyways, folks, you like the music you heard here? That's all me. Click the join button if you want it. Thanks again. I'm your boy, Nick, with Gear Seekers. You peek. We seeking. We'll see you around. Thanks for watching.